Folks, going on, Arm and Hammer here. Today, we're going to be answering one of the most common questions out there. How do I get better at programming? Let's get to it. Before you can figure out how to get better at programming, we actually have to define what we mean when we say programming. Because the thing that happens when your coach writes the workout up on the whiteboard during your class at your local affiliate is very different from what happens when a weightlifter is following a series of workouts that is going to peak and prepare them for a competition or a baseball player in the off season is working on shoring up some weaknesses, developing some new skills, but in general, just getting fitter and stronger for the upcoming season. The types of things that all are under this umbrella term of programming seem very disparate. It can completely change depending on the goal you have. And that's an important thing to understand when it comes to talking about programming. Programming doesn't even have to be all encompassing. You don't necessarily need to be writing every single bit of somebody's training in order to be programming for them at a high level. You could just be writing little pieces here and there that are directed at developing something incredibly specific. And I've talked a little bit in the past about how I think you should approach training certain weaknesses. I talked about tr uh, density training specifically, and I mentioned something called progressive overload or the progressive overload principle. And there are, like the progressive overload principle, other scientific things that you have to be aware of and familiar with, intimately familiar with, if you're going to be good at programming those types of very specific developmental cycles that grow upon week after week after week and are directed at getting somebody better at one specific thing or two specific things over a short period of time. You have to be familiar with progressive overload. You have to be familiar with super compensation, which is what is happening in your body that adapts to the stimulus that allows progressive overload to work the way it does. You have to be familiar with periodization in general so that you can understand what happens on a smaller time scale, like a week, two weeks, three weeks, versus a much longer time scale, like six months or a year, or an even longer time scale for like an Olympic cycle, a two, three, four year long cycle between major competitions with peaks among that period of time. But as beautiful and interesting and exciting as all of those scientific principles are, they are a little unnecessary for what we're actually doing on a day to day basis. And I don't mean that to degrade that type of depth when it comes to creating workouts and plans and programs. I mean that in the sense that it's overkill. You and I aren't programming for an Olympic weightlifter who's competing at the Olympics. And if you're watching this and you are programming for an Olympian, what are you doing? <laughs> this is not what you should be doing. You should probably already know what you're talking about and you should probably already know all the things that I have mentioned. But either way, the, the, the mass participation of writing workouts for your affiliate or for yourself or for your friends, it's a completely different world. And a lot of times the main goal behind those things is priority A, get people to continue showing up and doing the thing. And behind that, slightly behind that, but behind that, is progress them in a smart, efficient, and safe manner. You might disagree with which one of those is number one versus number two. You might make a really strong argument that it should be the former ahead of the latter, right? Either way, the, the point I'm trying to make here is if you are thinking of getting better at programming, you're like, you know what? I'm going to write the quote-unquote 
perfect program for my members at my gym or for myself and my friends. And it's going to be awesome. We're going to use this methodology for developing our strength. And we're going to use this methodology for developing our endurance. And we're going to use this methodology for developing our fitness. And we're also going to follow CrossFit.com. And we're also going to pull these ideas over here for developing, you know, strict muscle ups or whatever. It's never going to work because of many, many different reasons. It's not going to work because you're pulling together too many disparate things. It's not going to work because when you're talking about programming for your clients, you're never going to get 100% adherence. Generally speaking, most gyms, and again, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but they're programming like Monday through Friday is their main program days. They program Saturdays as like team workouts and Sundays is open gym if you're even open at all, or it's just coach's choice. And what are you really programming for in that case? Is it just everyone works out all seven days? Well, if you're not programming everyone works out all seven days, then you're programming certain days hit certain things. And if you're programming certain days hit certain things, what happens to the member that can't show up on Tuesdays to have their power clean day? Do they just never power clean? No, of course not. You have to be able to work around the real world implications of people's schedules. You can't only ever heavy squat on Mondays because there's going to be a percentage of your gym that never shows up on Mondays, right? It doesn't make any sense. And so you can't really apply these incredibly complex, very subtle, deep tools of science in programming to what happens in your gym. It just doesn't work. So then if you're talking about programming, if you're talking about writing workouts that are going to be engaging interesting, safe, effective, progressive, that actually takes that like really cutting edge, that like knife's edge of super intense scientific one-to-one programming type depth that you get in people where you're tracking all these really, really specific amounts of weight that they move versus distance that they run versus rest that they get to get them to a very specific place. It takes that type of intense scientific depth and it allows you to just skim the very useful fat off the top and only utilize that you're looking for again engaging interesting fun safe progressive that's the general type of programming we're talking about when we're talking about programming for groups and the best way to get better at that is to just try it the only way you're going to get better any of that type of programming and writing workouts is by trying it. Specifically, you kind of have to suck at it for a little bit. So you have to write really shitty workouts because you won't necessarily know they're shitty, but you'll try them or your friends will try them or your members will try them. And they're going to say that that was pretty shitty. That was not a good workout. And that is just a lesson that you have to learn. So you have to try these different versions of writing workouts. Maybe you think to yourself, hey, Tabata is pretty exciting. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. What if it was like a a double Tabata? What if it was 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off? Okay. That's an interesting idea. Try working workouts with double Tabata intervals in there. Okay. If double Tabata is interesting, is triple Tabata interesting? One minute on, 30 seconds off? That actually sounds really familiar. So yeah, that's probably good too. And you can just keep like practicing and trying out these different intervals. Eventually, you know, you might end up doing like whatever X amount of Tabata and you're doing like 10 minutes on five minutes off. And that is valuable, but also very, very different than doing 20 seconds on and 10 seconds off. So you have to know where and how you're applying those different methodologies. Maybe you love EMOMs, but you can't just program nothing but EMOMs because That just doesn't really do the thing that you're looking for. So you have to find new ways of adding variety to your workouts as well. And again, the best and only real way to do that is to try it out. You have to write workouts and either do them yourself, which is ideal, or have people that you trust to give you honest feedback do it for you so that you get that honest feedback. Let me tell you why I spent so much time talking about 
what programming means and the different types of these like very in-depth scientific based programs that are meant to develop this different very specific capacities and trying to apply those things to a group setting and why that falls apart let me tell you why i talked about that so much because that's the trap that i fell into i love programming i'm a huge fan of it i spent a lot of time working on the template that we used at our affiliate. I spent a ton of time developing really specific programs to implement over as like extra work into our general program. The template that I put together for our, our gym was beautiful. It was something that I very much enjoyed, but I spent so much time putting it together. And I think I was able to like generally solve that problem that I mentioned earlier about how like you can't just program squats on Mondays because you lose the people who don't show up on Mondays. They don't squat and you, you can't just deprive people of heavy squats. It's like the best thing that we do. So it just, it was a problem that needed to be resolved. And at the same time, I wanted to make sure that we were hitting various rep ranges and doing high volume versus lower volume and adjusting the weights and intensity to those different days. I also wanted to make sure we spent time developing gymnastic skills and body awareness and not just strength work. And I'm not saying this, by the way, as I'm special, your gym your coach, your your the whoever programs for your gym, maybe it's someone in house, maybe it's someone who you hire who they just program for gyms. They've all they think about this stuff. This is just the types of problems that you try and solve for groups. And I fell into this trap of trying to build the perfect program. I lost sight of the engagement, fun progression. I lost sight of balancing all those things. And I very much leaned more towards like, I think I can make it all perfect. And it drove me crazy. It drove me crazy. It was so much work, way more than was necessary for what the end product and how it was being consumed by our general member. I'm not saying that I regret spending all that time because I learned a lot about both myself and and programming in general. And I got a ton of feedback, both positive and negative. And I still get feedback from our, our, our old members who like go back and redo these workouts or look at these like cycles that we had like built into our programming and, and still try and repeat them in their own, their, you know, their own training, whether it's at a garage or an open gym somewhere. The lesson that I learned is there's no such thing as perfect. You can't take a powerlifting program and apply it to a, gi a giant group of people who won't all show up every day the same days each week. It just doesn't work that way. And the reality of what people are expecting needs to match what you're delivering. Now, let me tell you why I think trying it out is the most important way for you to actually learn this thing and experience what your programming is doing. And I'll, I'll give you a very personal example the hatch squat cycle. A ton of people are familiar with hatch. It's like a legendary squat program that builds leg strength for weightlifters. It's, you know, a, a very specific leg strength squatting program. You know, it's like Smolov is a leg strength program. You know, Smolov Jr. is a squat. These are all like squat programs, right? I thought to myself, if hatch works for squatting, which it obviously does because a ton of people have recommended it, maybe using that same percentage work, I could do it with deadlifts and bench press. And I was like, I'm a genius. This is perfect. I'm going to take the hatch squat cycle, like generator program, Excel sheet or whatever it was that I downloaded off the internet. And I'm going to put in my numbers for my deadlift and I'm going to put in my numbers for my bench. And here's where the stroke of genius is. Since I didn't want to take six months to try this out across all three of those movements, I layered them together. And so at the same time, I, genius programmer extraordinaire and moron, decided to do a hatch squat cycle as well as a bench version and a deadlift version. 
And in case you can't see the inevitable end of this, I fell apart so fast and got not a single ounce stronger. I just wrecked my body so hard because I completely ignored any sort of scientific evidence that you just can't do that to yourself for any extended period of time and expect your body to be able to recover enough to get better. At the same time, I learned from that. I learned that you can't just swap your numbers in like a squat program and think that you can deadlift off that and it's going to be okay for your body in any way. I learned something from that. It's important to understand that you're experimenting and the multitude of people who are writing programs, both successfully and unsuccessfully, you can learn from their version of experimenting and you absolutely should. When I was learning about programming, I obviously, like I said, I I looked really deeply into those various like scientific principles. I read Starting Strength. I read uh, other like Ripito's other books. He had a more advanced book about you know programming, and it got much deeper into progressive overload, supercompensation, that sort of thing. You can go straight to the source and read you know the Russian masters, but I can't read Russian. So, and, uh, and it was really boring. I tried to read the, uh, I tried to read the translations. They were super boring. So like even as much of a nerd as I am in this programming, I got very bored trying to read all that stuff. So I, I read other people's summaries of it. You know, that's the cliff notes either way. My point is as much as you like can get into that stuff and like learn firsthand, you're very limited in terms of your bandwidth of learning firsthand. So learn from other people's experience as well. Have your friends and your other coaches writing workouts, give each other feedback, learn from the things that they write and do versus the things that you write and do. See what other gyms are programming. See what Ben Bergeron is programming or Invictus CJ at Invictus is programming. Read through uh, Chris Hinshaw's programs and see why, like ask yourself, why does this work? And maybe you're going to have to invest 50 bucks here for a month of programming, a hundred bucks here for a month of programming, 30 bucks here for a month of programming, and just like sit it down and like look at it. And then you might see some ebbs and flows. You might start to see, okay, well, this is where they start adding in a little bit of their volume, or this is where their intensity really skyrockets and stays at this high level for a couple of days. Or here's their oh, here's the open prep program from name a programmer, and you're like, okay, well now I'm starting to see they're adding in toes to bar volume work, and they're adding in double under volume work, and they're adding in thrusters in a progressive way week to week. I could utilize those ideas. That's the process of trying it out. You won't necessarily be able to do every workout. You won't be able to write every workout. You won't be able to understand every workout, but you can absolutely write and do and understand a lot if you just look at what other people are doing, break it down into understandable fashions, try things out on yourself as well as the people that you're programming for and learn from those experiences. So there you go, folks. Programming is absolutely a science and an art. It is a beautiful thing, a challenging thing. It's not easy, but you can absolutely improve at it quicker than you think you can by just giving it a shot. You're going to write some really terrible workouts. You're going to have some really terrible ideas, but among all of those are going to be good ones. And you're going to learn from both the terrible ones and the good ones. And eventually, you're going to be way better than when you first started. And that's what it's all about. Hopefully that helps answer this question. I know it's not the most specific answer, but I think it's the correct answer. If you have any other questions, if you completely disagree, if you just have something to say that has nothing to do with the content of this video, leave it in the comment section. I love reading those comments. I love seeing them pop up and I absolutely read every single one of them. Thank you so much, everybody. Enjoy. I'll see you very, very soon. Take care.